so the next sequence of moves we're going to look at are uh, the end couple of moves from Chung Zhe. Now uh, this is repeated on both sides. So we've got this uh, low knife hand block, then palm strike. Okay, then we step across to the other side. But we get into it first from a turn. Um, so the, the way we're getting into this is by from this movement here, then we're going to spin around here like that, strike like that. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> what are we doing with this? And again, I'll, I'll borrow check. So um, the more higher up the patterns you go, the more pronounced the attacking of pressure points is. So um, what we're going to do is use these two knuckles here to attack pressure points on the body. So in Chun Jam we strike them in this way. Sometimes people are uh, bringing them around in this configuration. This configuration, this configuration, arms this way, arms this way. It really doesn't make any difference. Uh, it's because the knuckles are the same either way. It's the point we're hitting with. So it makes no difference. So basically there are a number of structures on his body that are parallel that I can hit with this. We've got here the temple referred to as the Yang Reservoir and uh, that's a horrible place to hit and um, traditional Chinese medicine people will tell you it's a very dangerous area to strike. So uh, we can strike into that and cause lots of damage. The only problem with that is it will make him go ah, oh, oh, oh. but it won't affect uh, the predictable movement that I want. Um, now, basically, we, this thing here is not going to let me walk up, step up to him, and attach him like that. It's just not going to happen. So we need a context for this to happen. We need a, um, a, 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 a habitual act of physical violence, as Patrick McCarthy says in, in his um, established principles, habitual act of physical violence. Once we've got that, a way that people attack you in real life, then we can figure out how to get out of it using uh, the techniques that we've got. So the context for this is, he's going to have me in what's called an underarm bear hug. So he's got me like this, right? Uh, now, you know, again, he's probably not going to walk up to me and bear hug me, but like if we're like swinging and stuff like that, then he's going to grab me, you know? Um, he's a bigger fella than me. If I got into a fight with him, I'm pretty confident that if we stayed our distance, I'd be able to trade strikes with him and evade a little bit. But once we get close, he's going to grab me. And that's because he has superior size and strength to me. And so bigger people instinctively know that if they grab hold of smaller people, they're going to be able to uh, have their will, uh, have their way, do whatever it is that they want to do, uh, because his strength will negate my ability to move around once he's got hold of me. All right, so, um, as I say, there's lots of ways to get into this, but he's in this underarm bear hug, which means my arms are still free. And it seems like a good idea, and it is if people don't know what they're doing. And we've already established that if I lock this leg up here like that, he won't be able to lift me, and take me anywhere. This is called a grapevine, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knuckles and press them in to the side of his neck. So this here is his jawbone here. Where his jawbone comes down underneath the ear, if you press in there, just close to the bone, there, you get this, look, what's this, ready? You get this effect. Ah! There you go. <laughs> there you go, sorry. It's extremely uncomfortable, extremely painful. Most people will just let go and recoil when you do that to them. If they don't, and they're determined attackers, or they want to take some pain, they're going to try and take your hands away from that position. And that is essentially what we want. My strategy to get out of this bear hug is to get him to grab my hands. Okay, because I then have a plan from there on. He doesn't have a plan from there on, which is good, because it means I was losing, I was in his game, okay, then, he grabs my hands, and now he's in my game. All right? 
So this is essentially what's going to happen. So he bears has to move like this. I take both of these knuckles here and I press them into the side like that, right? He comes up like that and he may well grab my hands. If he does, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach across with this hand here and grab hold of his wrist. And at the same time, I'm going to spin out this way, watch. And drag. There. And again. So here, he bear hugs. I'm going to grab like this, he grabs here, and I spin around and drag. And I'm using the momentum of my own body to turn him. Now, as you can see, if I turn him around this way, and I pull him this way, again, we've got exactly what we want. We've got this area of the side of the head where I want to strike into him. Anywhere from the ear uh, down to these pressure points in the jaw and the neck, right? And again, all I'm going to do is take my palm and just go bang in there like that. At the same time, I've got this bang. So I've set up this strike. And you'll see this as a re reoccurring theme in a lot of our application work. We're using this arm drag to pull that head sideways to set up this strike. All right, I'm controlling him to get to this point. This is the point I want where he's not preventing me from hitting into him. Okay, then from there on, hopefully, the fight is going my way. All right? <clears throat> so, one more time. He grabs like this, I go like that, he grabs my arm, I reach up, I spin around this way and I drag. Hit, then I strike. Bam! And again. <clears throat> <clears throat> hey! Ah! 